in the last lecture, we had tried to find out the inductance, the mutual inductance between the rotor coil and the stator coil for a cylindrical rotor salient pole cylindrical stator salient pole rotor arrangement. And in order to see how that expression for that can be derived, we had a look at how the flux distribution inside this kind of machine would look like. And we have then understood that the flux distribution inside the machine for the rotor angle equal to 0. The rotor angle equal to 0 was the case where this rotor is positioned horizontally. You have a coil on the stator here, one single coil on the stator, the rotor positioned horizontally and you have coils wound on the rotor. And for that location of the rotor, if you travel around the air gap, around this inner circumference of the stator and try to find out how the flux density variation would look like. We saw that the flux density variation looks like this. The flux density is almost 0 for some time. When the pole phase arrives, you have a large value of flux density and once you cross the pole phase, the flux density is again 0 and in the next pole phase, the flux density is negative and so on. That is a kind of waveform that you have. If the rotor is going to move, we find that this flux density waveform has bodily shifted along the x axis, <coughs> but the wave shape remains the same. The first waveform is drawn for an angle theta r equal to 0. The second waveform is drawn for an angle theta r equal to 30 degrees. The waveform has moved by 30 degrees. At 60 degrees, we find that the waveform has moved further compared to this and the wave shape essentially remains the same except for the small dip. And when the rotor has moved by 90 degrees, we find that the position of the dip is same, but the waveform has moved by another 30 degrees. So, this essentially how the flux density around the air gap, this x axis denotes the flux density variation as you travel around the air gap of the machine. This dip that occurs is due to the slot which is present here. You see that there is a slot present if you start from uh, the circumference angle 0 here and then you travel all the way here. So, at an angle equal to 180 degrees, you find that there is a slot. And because of that slot, the flux density therefore dips and when the waveform moves further, the position of the dip remains the same. This in effect is due to the slotting and we said that we are going to neglect slotting in this evaluation. And therefore, the flux density waveform is approximated as a square wave like this with an intervening 0 intervals. Now, this waveform is again drawn for the case of rotor angle equal to 0 degrees. As the rotor angle moves, this waveform is going to shift along the x axis as we had seen earlier. So, now the issue is having known that the flux density waveform is going to look like this quasi square wave with 0 intervening intervals how do we go about deriving an expression for the mutual inductance. Now, we note here that the flux density waveform that we have drawn is the flux density that arises due to excitation in the rotor. So, the rotor is being excited and for a given position in the rotor, one can determine what the flux density waveform is as you travel around the circumference of the air gap. <coughs> we want to find the mutual inductance 
therefore the mutual inductance m between stator and rotor is defined as the flux linkage in the stator coil per unit current flowing in the rotor so psi s by i r so that is what we need to find out so now the question is flux density around the air gap is a function of which is to say is dependent on the circumferential angle circumferential angle by circumferential angle what we mean is the angle that you would traverse if you travel along the inner circumference of the stator that is your circumferential angle we start with 0 here and then travel around reach 180 here and then back to 360 here that is the circumferential angle and we have seen that it is dependent on the circumferential angle for some place it is 0 then maximum flux then 0 and so on right. So, if this is the case how do we find out what is the flux linkage of this coil on the stator. So, to find out flux linkage, <coughs> flux linkage is defined as the number of turns in the stator coil multiplied by the flux passing through passing through an area spanned by the coil now the area spanned by the coil what we can conveniently take we know that flux lines are going from the rotor and going to cross into the stator and therefore the area spanned by the coil could be taken as the area along the inner circumference of the stator from one side of the coil to the other side of the coil this entire inner circumferential area is what we can consider. What we mean by the circumferential area is that this machine is extending along the axis of itself which lies perpendicular to the plane of the drawing and therefore it is basically a cylindrical structure which rises from which, which which goes out of this plane and if it is going to be a cylinder then there is a circumferential area of the cylinder inside flux is passing from the rotor into the stator along the circumferential area and therefore that is a circumferential area which we are going to consider in order to determine the flux that is being uh, linked by this loop. And so, how does one do that? We know that flux is given by the flux density multiplied by d a that is flux density into area is going to give you flux that is passing through that area. So, if you now consider an elemental area let us say that we are looking at a small area here from the center let us say that this area this arc subtends an angle d alpha and which lies at some angle alpha from your reference 0 degrees. So, if you want to find out the flux that is passing through this elemental area that is obtained by the expression B at this value of alpha B as a function of alpha multiplied by d A that is at this point. And this will then if you multiply this elemental flux linkage that is 
the flux linkage arising due to the flux passing through this elemental area we can call it as d psi s this d psi s is then equal to the number of turns in the stator multiplied by b dot d a okay now in order to work out this example let us consider a small modification which will help us to understand windings better in the drawing that is shown here you have one coil side that is placed here and the other coil side lies exactly 180 degrees away now in some cases this may not be the situation the other coil side may not lie 180 degrees away but it may lie in a slot that is probably less than 180 degrees away maybe a slot lying here you would have this other coil side here in which case we call this angle this angle let us call this as beta we call beta as the coil span in other words the coil spans an angle of beta so let us say that this coil that we are considering is now spanning an angle of beta which is likely to be less than 180 degrees and <coughs> we want to find out the flux linkage in this uh, loop so as we said we are now trying to find out how much flux is linked by this coil by finding out how much flux is going to cross the circumferential surface of the stator inner circumferential surface this surface area how much flux is going to cross so in order to do that we have started considering an elemental area we have found out the flux linkage now this expression this approach can be used but we first have to have an expression for b and b as you know we have approximated the waveform of b to look like this it is a quasi square wave which is going here and we have this coil which is now situated one side of the coil is here another side of the coil is somewhere here which is less than 180 degrees okay so in order to do this what we can do since we need to have a functional form describing the variation of b with respect to alpha we can try to resort to resolve the waveform of b the spatial distribution of b into fourier series into its fourier series expansion <coughs> then we will have b of alpha is equal to some uh, sigma of uh, let us say a n cos n alpha plus b n sin n alpha sigma going from n equal to 1 to infinity and then one can use this expression to substitute in this value of b and derive an expression for d psi a so how does one go about doing this so we have seen that this waveform of b is this waveform is going to be an odd function of this angle in the sense if you now extend this waveform to the left of 0 degrees then this waveform is going to look like this which means it is an odd function of the circumferential angle and therefore if we try to derive the Fourier series expression for this this expression will contain only the sinusoidal terms the cosinusoidal terms 
<coughs> which are a n terms will not be there. Therefore, all a n are equal to 0 in this waveform. We need to determine only the terms corresponding to b n. And further we note that this waveform has half wave symmetry in the sense the waveform becomes negative after every half a cycle and therefore, we have the condition f of alpha is equal to minus of f of alpha plus pi that is your half wave symmetric waveform. And therefore, if this is the case we also know that only odd harmonics exist. Right. And therefore, we can now write an expression for B n, B n is equal to 2 by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi B of alpha sin n alpha d alpha. And since this waveform is half wave symmetric, one can simplify this as 4 by 2 pi into integral 0 to pi b of alpha sin n alpha d alpha. And further <coughs> this waveform also has a symmetry about 90 degrees. You find that if you draw the angle, draw the line corresponding to 90 degrees, the waveform on either side are equal. This forms a line of symmetry and therefore, you can further simplify this expression as 8 by 2 pi integral 0 to pi by 2 b of alpha sin n alpha d alpha. Now, in doing the integration from 0 to pi by 2, we further note that this waveform is 0 over some angle. Let us call this angle for which it is 0 from 0 degrees. Let us call this angle as gamma. Then what you have is this integral reduces to 8 by 2 pi integral from gamma to pi by 2 b of alpha sin n alpha d alpha and in the range gamma to pi by 2 b has a certain maximum value which is constant and therefore, we can write it as b hat divided by 2 pi integral gamma to pi by 2 sin n alpha d alpha. And so, let us simplify this expression. This is nothing but 8 b hat by 2 pi integral of sin n alpha is cos n alpha by n limits going from gamma to pi by 2. And this is therefore, 8 b hat by 2 n pi cos n pi by 2 minus cos n gamma by n gamma. That is your expression that you have. Now, note that we have already observed that this expression in this expression you will have only odd values of n because this has only odd ordered harmonics. Even ordered harmonics do not exist in this waveform. So, it is enough if you consider this for odd values of n and if you put odd values of n here <coughs> let us say n equal to 1 
then this expression that is b 1 is then 8 b hat by 2 pi into cos of pi by 2 is 0. So, you have minus cos gamma and then for n equal to 3 you have b 3 equals 8 b hat by 6 pi into cos of 3 pi by 2 is again 0. So, you have minus cos 3 gamma and then you have n equal to 5 you have b 5 equals 8 b hat by 10 pi cos of 5 pi by 2 cos of 5 pi by 2 is cos of cos of 5 pi by 2 is equal to cos of 2 pi plus pi by 2 which is equal to cos pi by 2 and therefore, that is 0. So, you have minus cos 5 gamma and therefore, one can see that B of alpha can then easily be written as um, 8 B hat by 2 pi minus cos gamma into sin alpha <coughs> plus 8 B hat by 6 pi into minus cos 3 gamma into sin 3 alpha plus 8 B hat by 10 pi into minus cos 5 gamma into sin 5 alpha plus so on. This is the series that you get. Now, one can um, simplify this go put it in a more simpler notation 4 b hat by pi into sigma n equals 1 to infinity we will take the minus sign also outside then you have cos of 2 n minus 1 into gamma into sin of 2 n minus 1 into alpha divided by 2 n minus 1. So, for n equal to 1 you have 2 into 1 minus 1 that is cos gamma for n equal to 2 you have cos 3 gamma for n equal to 3 you have uh, uh, you have cos 5 gamma and the denominator also appropriately varies. So, this is the expression for B of alpha note that in this expression n goes from 1 to infinity we have taken care of the odd harmonics by putting 2 n minus 1 here. So, this is then your expression for B alpha and what we want to do is to substitute this expression for B alpha in this expression for D psi and therefore, what we get is D psi s is nothing but minus 4 B hat by pi multiplied by n s n equal to 1 to infinity cos of 2 n minus 1 gamma sin 2 n minus 1 alpha by 2 n minus 1. This is n into B a you have to multiply this by D a. Now, in this machine geometry that you have 
what would happen with the flux lines is that these flux lines these flux lines would go from the stator from the rotor to the stator we are exciting the stator and trying to find out what is the flux linkage in the rotor at this interface we would find that the flux lines enter the stator in such a manner that flux lines are perpendicular to stator surface stator inner surface which means that the flux density vector b is normal to the area at the inner circumference flux lines are perpendicular to the stator inner surface and therefore the flux density vector is normal to the area at the inner circumference and therefore b dot da will simply reduce to b multiplied by d a and what is this d a? d a is the elemental area around the inner circumference of the stator which means it is basically the arc length here multiplied by the length along the axis and therefore, <coughs> if we say that the length along the axis is l the total area of that elemental segment is L into R d alpha. This is nothing but your d a that is there. So, if you substitute this expression for d a, then what you have is L R d alpha. So, this is now an expression for the elemental flux linkage due to flux passing over this elemental area only through this area, but actually the area through which flux is going to pass which links this coil is this entire area and therefore, in order to find out what is the flux linkage due to all the flux passing through this area we then need to integrate. So, the flux linkage psi s is integral of d psi s <coughs> and the limits of the integral are from 0 alpha equal to 0 to alpha equal to the other end uh, other end of this coil of the stator. Note that the other end of the coil lies at an angle beta and therefore, you integrate over alpha going from 0 to beta and so this is alpha going from 0 to beta. So, let us do this integration. Now, in this obviously, this 4 b n s they are all constant. So, you have minus 4 b hat n s multiplied by l into r divided by pi into integral alpha going from 0 to beta cos I forgot the summation. So, let us put the summation also there um, sigma n equal to 1 to infinity um, you have cos of 2 n minus 1 gamma by 2 n minus 1 and integral alpha equal to 0 to beta sin of 2 n minus 1 
alpha sorry that is alpha d alpha. So, that is the integration that we need to do. So, that can be written as minus 4 b hat n s l into r by pi into sigma n equal to 1 to infinity cos 2 n minus 1 into gamma by 2 n minus 1. Integral of sin is again minus cos. So, you get a minus sign here and then you have cos of 2 n minus 1 into alpha by 2 n minus 1 this going from 0 to beta and therefore, this expression is minus 4 p hat n s into l into r divided by pi n equal to 1 to infinity minus cos of 2 n minus 1 gamma by 2 n minus 1 whole square and now you have cos of 2 n minus 1 beta minus cos of 2 n minus 1 into 0 and 2 n minus 1 into 0 is 1. So, you have basically minus 4 b hat n s l r by pi n equal to 1 to infinity uh, minus cos of 2 n minus 1 gamma by 2 n minus 1 whole square into cos of 2 n minus 1 into beta minus 1. So, this is the expression that we land up with for the flux linkage. Now, note that this expression is however, valid only for one particular position of the rotor. That is the rotor having theta r equal to 0. If theta r equal is not equal to 0, what do we do? How do we describe the flux density waveform for the case where theta r is not equal to 0? Now, if theta r is not equal to 0, what we have seen earlier is that the flux density waveform is going to bodily shift along the x axis. So, you have theta r equal to 0 and then theta r equal to 30, 60, 90, the waveform is shifting. So, essentially therefore, if you want to have the flux density waveform at which is going to vary as a function of alpha, but not only as a function of alpha, it is also going to vary as a function of the rotor angle. <coughs> this is nothing but the waveform shifting as the rotor angle moves and this is therefore, the same as b alpha minus theta r. You say that if you have a waveform f of x and you want to shift it by some unit tau, then what you have is f of x minus tau. That is the same thing we are doing here and this is alpha minus theta r. Therefore, if you want to describe it like this, what you have to do is in these expressions instead of alpha, you will have to put alpha minus theta r. And therefore, now the flux density expressions would become b of alpha comma theta r will be minus 4 b hat n s into l into r divided by pi 
multiplied by sigma going from n equal to 1 to infinity minus cos um, 2 n minus 1 sig gamma 2 n minus 1 gamma into sin of 2 n minus 1 into now alpha minus theta r divided by 2 n minus 1. This would then be your flux density distribution if you include theta r also. This is therefore, a two variable expression. Now, this would then give us the variation of flux linkage as the rotor angle also is going to change. <coughs> right? This expression earlier we had derived a simpler form of the expression, so that we get to grips with the integration process that is involved and here we had fixed the rotor at a particular position the particular position was theta r equal to 0. So, if theta r equal to 0 one obviously sees that there is no theta r here the expression becomes the same as earlier case. Right? So, what we really have to do is now to get do the same integration with this expression and therefore, what you have is integral 0 to beta d psi s is your expression for psi s and this is then equal to minus 4 b hat n s into l into r divided by pi into sigma n equal to 1 to infinity cos 2 n minus 1 into gamma by 2 n minus 1 into integral 0 to beta of sin 2 n minus 1 into alpha minus theta r multiplied by d alpha. So, that is the integration that we would have to do if you want to consider the rotor angle variation also and this integration therefore, is minus 4 b hat n s into l into r divided by pi sigma n equal to 1 to infinity cos 2 n minus 1 into gamma by 2 n minus 1 into from sin you would get a minus cos. So, you get a minus and then this is cos of 2 n minus 1 into alpha minus theta r divided by 2 n minus 1. So, we put the square here and this part goes from 0 to beta. So, let us simplify the notation a little we will call as um, k 2 n minus 1 as 4 times beta hat n s into l into r divided by pi into cos of 2 n minus 1 gamma divided by 2 n minus 1 whole square. So, that it is easier for us to deal with. So, this is then sigma of n equal to 1 to infinity k 2 n minus 1 into cos of 2 n minus 1 into beta minus theta r minus cos of 2 n minus 1 into 0 minus theta r that is minus theta r, which therefore, reduces to sigma n equal to 1 to infinity 
k 2 n minus 1 into cos 2 n minus 1 into beta minus theta r minus cos of 2 n minus 1 theta r. So, let us expand the first term and that would give us cos of 2 n minus 1 into beta into cos of 2 n minus 1 into theta r plus sin of 2 n minus 1 into beta into sin of 2 n minus 1 into theta r. This is an expansion for the first two terms and then you have minus cos of 2 n minus 1 into theta r. So, one can group the first and last terms together this is nothing but cos of 2 n minus 1 into theta r into cos 2 n minus 1 into beta minus 1 plus sin of 2 n minus 1 into beta sin 2 n minus 1 into theta r. Okay. So, what we essentially see from this expression is that let us maybe it would be of it would be instructive to write down the first few expressions of the sequence. The first few terms of the sequence would then be for n equal to 1, what we have arrived at is the flux linkage for n equal to 1 k 2 n minus 1 is nothing but 4 beta hat n s. So, 4 beta hat n s uh, into L into R by pi, this is the constant term and then for n equal to 1, what we have from here is cos gamma by 1 square. So, you have cos gamma and then this term would give us um, cos of theta r into may be good to use the earlier expression itself perhaps cos of um, beta minus theta r minus cos of theta r is the first expression and then you would have um, cos of 3 gamma into cos of what you have cos of 3 gamma into cos of 3 times beta minus theta r minus cos 3 theta r and then you will have cos of 5 gamma. Of course, this would be divided by uh, 9, this would be divided by 25 cos of 5 gamma into cos of 5 times beta minus theta r minus cos 5 theta r and so on. This would be a series. Now, one can see that this expression contains a fundamental term which corresponds to the variation with respect to theta itself and then it contains a third harmonic which means there is a variation with respect to 3 times theta and then there is a fifth harmonic 
which contains variations with respect to 5 times theta and so on there will be many more harmonics. But however, we find that the harmonic amplitudes go down rather fast. The third harmonic is one ninth of what would have been the first, the fifth harmonic is one twenty fifth of what would have been the first and therefore, in the flux linkage expression the harmonic terms are going to contribute less and less as the harmonic order increases and because of this reason it is most in most situations sufficient to look at the fundamental component alone right. And there also we have derived this expression for a certain angle beta. Now, let us look at harmonic number 3 that has a variation as cos of 3 times beta minus theta r minus cos 3 theta r. Now, supposing you choose beta equal to 2 pi by 3, then what happens to this term is it becomes cos of 3 times 2 pi by 3 minus theta r minus cos 3 theta r, which is the same as cos of 2 pi minus 3 theta r minus cos 3 theta r, which is the same as cos of 3 theta r minus cos 3 theta r, which is 0. So, it means that you can choose a value of beta in such a way that a specific harmonic in the flux linkage is eliminated. So, this is one of the advantages of having beta not equal to 180 degrees. Okay. So, appropriately one can choose an angle of beta. So, having understood that even if you do not choose an angle of uh, 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 equal to 2 pi by 3 the amplitudes are going to diminish as 1 by n square. So, in most cases <coughs> for our analysis where we encounter non sinusoidal distributions which are typically going to be the case what we would do is consider only the fundamental of the distribution. Therefore, if you consider the fundamental component of the flux linkage that can then be written as 4 b hat into n s into l into r by pi multiplied by cos gamma multiplied by cos of beta minus theta r minus cos theta r. This is in most cases this expression would be sufficient for us to get reasonably good result. Having understood that let us now look at the case where beta is equal to pi. If beta is equal to pi it means that the other end of the coil other side of the uh, loop that we are considering lies 180 degree away and these kind of arrangements is this is called as a full pitched coil. So, for a full pitched coil then the flux linkage expression would be psi s is equal to 4 beta hat n s into l into r divided by pi cos gamma cos of pi minus theta r is minus cos theta r. So, this results in this is into minus 2 times cos theta r. So, you end up with minus 8 b hat n s into l into r divided by pi cos gamma cos theta r which is some maximum value multiplied by psi psi maximum or psi hat as per our notation into cos theta. So, having derived this expression then let us look in the next 
uh, next lecture session how to deal with this and how to get the mutual inductance out of it. It should be fairly easy to do that b hat is a function of i s and therefore, if you divide this by i s you get an expression for the mutual inductance. We will look at that in the next lecture session.